Hi, I'm here with your Bible reading. I got some good news for you guys. I'm going to have Kinsley. Um, my sister is bringing her tomorrow morning, and we get to watch her until Sunday night. So we'll have Kinsley for a couple days. Hmm. And of course, I'm going to try to get her in a video for you guys. All right. We'll start off where we left off yesterday with John chapter 11, verse 55, reading through chapter 12, verse 19. We'll be talking about Jesus being anointed at Bethany, and then Jesus comes to Jerusalem as king. Let's begin. When it was almost time for the Jewish Passover, many went up from the country of Jerusalem to their ceremonial cleansing before the Passover. They kept looking for Jesus. As they stood in the temple courts, they asked one another, What do you think? Isn't he coming to the festival at all? But the chief priests and the Pharisees had given orders that anyone who found out where Jesus was should report it so they might arrest him. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus lived, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. Here a dinner was given in Jesus' honor. Martha served, while Lazarus was among those reclining at the table with him. Then Mary took about a pint of pure nard, an expensive perfume. She poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair and the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, who was later to betray him, objected, Why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? It was worth a year's wages. He did not say this because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief, as keeper of the money bag. He used to help himself to what was put into it. Leave her alone, Jesus replied. It was intended that she should save this perfume for the day of my burial. You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. Meanwhile, a large crowd of Jews found out that Jesus was there and came not only because of him, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests made plans to kill Lazarus as well. For an account of him, many of the Jews were going to over to Jesus and believing in him because of Lazarus. And the Pharisees and the priests didn't like them. Now Jesus comes to Jerusalem as king really not going to like this, are they? The next day, the great crowd that had come for the festival heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. Then they took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, as it is written, Do not be afraid, daughter Zion. See, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. At first, his disciples did not understand all this. Only after Jesus was glorified did they realize that these things had been written about him and that these things might have been done to him. Now the crowd that was with him, when he called Lazarus from the tomb, was raised him from the dead continued to spread the word. Many people, because they had heard that he had performed this sign, went out to meet him. So the Pharisees said to one another, See, this is getting us nowhere. Look how the whole world has gone after him. So they were very, very angry. 
And that's where we'll stop with John for today. What's going to happen? Is the Pharisees going to get their way and get Jesus and Lazarus killed during the festival? Or is Jesus going to prevail again? I'll leave you guys thinking about that until tomorrow. No stitches. Excuse me. Um, okay, we're going to read um, Psalm 118, verses 1 through verse 18 today. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love endures forever. Let Israel say, His love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, His love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His love endures forever. When hard pressed, I cried to the Lord. He brought me into a spacious place. The Lord is with me. I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? The Lord is with me. He is my helper. I look in triumph on my enemies. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in humans. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than trust in princes. All the nations surrounded me, but the name of the Lord I cut them down. They surrounded me on every side, but in the name of the Lord I cut them down. They swarmed around me like bees, but they were consumed as quickly as burning thorns. In the name of the Lord I cut them down. I was pushed back and about to fall, but the Lord helped me. The Lord is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. Shouts of joy and victory resound in the tents of the righteous. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. The Lord's right hand is lifted high. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. I will not die but live and will proclaim what the Lord has done. The Lord has chastened me severely, but he has not given me over to death. And that was our psalm for today. And lastly, we'll be reading Proverbs chapter 15, verse 24 through 26. And Proverbs 15, 24 says, The path of life leads upward for the prudent to keep them from going down to the realm of the dead. And Proverbs 15, 25 says, the Lord tears down the house of the proud, but he seats the widow's boundary stones in place. And lastly, Proverbs 15:26 says, The Lord detests the thoughts of the wicked, but gracious words are pure in his sight. Okay, guys, that was today's Bible reading. I hope it touched your guys' hearts. I hope you guys are having a great Thursday. Let's bring those souls to Jesus. And um, hopefully I'll have Kinsley with me in the video tomorrow. And God willing, we'll see you guys again tomorrow. Bye, guys. God bless.